Good evening and thanks for joining us. Top stories today. A new executive order from President Trump's desk is designed to protect a crucial part of U.S. infrastructure, our electrical grid. The Department of Energy says the new order will help prevent foreign attacks. Former Vice President Joe Biden is denying accusations brought on by a former staff member. Many of the state's stay-at-home orders expire today, and the vast majority of the nation is opening up. That leaves only 12 states still shuttered. New York's governor announces a decision to close New York City's subways overnight. The closure will allow the city to disinfect train cars every 24 hours. And falling for Communist Party propaganda, a Chinese study abroad student flew home to avoid the virus outbreak. What happened next devastated him. A new executive order is signed in the White House. This one aimed at protecting the U.S. electricity system from cyber attacks. It'll make it harder for foreign adversaries to target critical U.S. infrastructure. In a move to help protect the power grid in the U.S., President Trump signed an executive order on Friday. The order seeks to secure our electricity system against cyber attacks by foreign threats. According to Energy Secretary Dan Broliet, the action will make it much harder for foreign adversaries to target the U.S.'s critical infrastructure. The power grid not only delivers electricity to homes and businesses, but also supports the military and emergency systems. A senior Energy Department official said that the order wasn't directed at any specific threat. Instead, it's the result of an effort to strengthen the power system. The Energy Department says government rules about buying equipment for the power grid often result in contracts being awarded to the lowest cost bids, which it says can be exploited. Trump's executive order prohibits purchases, imports or transfer of power equipment if U.S. officials think the transactions may be influenced by a foreign adversary. The 2019 Worldwide Threat Assessment issued by then U.S. Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats reported that China, Russia and other countries were using cyber techniques to spy on U.S. infrastructure. The majority of the nation is in recovery mode as around 20 states loosen restrictions and reopen today. And Texas is easing up even more. But still, a handful of states have chosen to buckle down for the coming weeks. The nation's CCP virus cases well over 1 million, more than 60,000 deaths and 150,000 recoveries. States are forging ahead with economic recovery. Texas, among the first to reopen, is moving further today, opening restaurants, malls and movie theaters. Iowa is among a number of states taking steps towards normalcy today, despite being one of the few states that never ordered people to stay home. Today in 77 counties with low or no virus activity, restaurants, fitness centers, retail stores and closed malls may reopen at 50 percent of normal operating capacity. Similar happenings today in North Dakota, Oklahoma and Wyoming. The vast majority of the nation is headed towards economic recovery, leaving 12 states still shuttered. But even among those with extended stay-at-home orders, some are loosening up on businesses. Like Maine, whose stay-at-home order is extended to the end of May, but businesses like barbershops and nail salons can reopen today, while some embrace tighter restrictions, like California. Tighten that up a little bit, and so we're gonna have a temporary pause on, on the beaches down there. But some residents refuse to adhere to the strict measures. Local reports say a sparsely populated California county is moving ahead with reopening despite Newsom's order. But in other popular tourist locations, like in Las Vegas, some residents aren't as eager for restrictions to ease up. If I go back too early, I won't be able to be alive to work. We'll live in a wonderful country and I take their word and they're helping us. So. That's amid Nevada's substantial economic blow. One economic researcher says the unemployment rate for the state resembles that of the Great Depression. Melina Weiskup, NTD News. Other states are set to loosen restrictions on Monday, making 38 states headed towards economic recovery. But that doesn't include Michigan. Its governor signed an executive order on Thursday, extending the state's lockdown measures until the end of May. It comes despite armed protesters entering Michigan's Capitol building on Thursday, unhappy with the governor's stay-at-home order. On Thursday night, Michigan's governor signed an executive order, keeping bars, gyms, casinos and theaters closed through May 28. It's been criticized as being too strict. 
The president weighed in this morning and encouraged her to give a little and make a deal. But the governor has said the fight against the virus isn't over and reminded Michiganders that people are still dying. Her move comes despite protesters, some bearing arms, gathering at Michigan's Capitol building on Thursday to protest her stay-at-home order. It's one of the strictest in the country. Under most circumstances, people aren't allowed to visit other homes and the sale of all non-essential items is banned. It's time to let people go back to work. That's all there is to it. Michigan has seen over 1 million unemployment claims, but has also seen over 40,000 virus cases, one of the worst hit states in the country. Inside the Capitol building on Thursday, the Republican-controlled House voted against extending the governor's state of emergency order for another 28 days. Instead, it voted to sue the governor for her handling of the outbreak. The speaker saying public health and open economy and constitutional rights can all be achieved if they work together. We want to work with this governor, and we are extending our hand to the governor. Under a 1945 emergency powers law, Governor Gretchen Whitmer, a Democrat, may not need the chamber's approval. And in New York, the governor said schools will stay closed until summer comes. That includes K through 12th grade, as well as colleges. In today's, Miguel Moreno has more updates from the state. The risk was too high for Governor Cuomo, so he said schools will stay closed for the rest of the school year. Uh, we don't think it's possible to do that in a way that would keep our children and students and educators safe. So we're going to have the schools remain closed for the rest of the year. The governor said online learning will still be possible, but while the state carries on with the lockdown, others are itching for it to open up. MAGA May Day rallies for freedom were to be held this afternoon across the country. This one in Nassau County took place in a small parking lot. About 10 cars protesting the shutdown. But there's another kind of shutdown nobody is protesting. Hospitalizations are going down and the Javits Center Emergency Hospital is expected to end its mission by the end of Friday. Over 1,000 patients were treated there, and the Pentagon says the center is now transferring patients to local hospitals. Military staffers are scheduled to leave starting next week. As of May 1st, over 23,000 people have died from the virus in New York, and over 308,000 have tested positive. Miguel Moreno, NTD News, New York. The governor will also shut down New York City's subway system each night to clean the trains. It's a rare move that aims to make essential workers safer as they commute and will address the city's homelessness problem. Governor Andrew Cuomo on Thursday announced a plan to deal with the homeless population sheltering in New York City trains during the CCP virus pandemic. They can disinfect all trains and buses every night. It can best be done by stopping train service from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. every night during the pandemic so they can actually perform this service. He says the nightly disinfection will start May 6th. Homeless people will be made to leave the trains and will be offered outreach services. It's an unprecedented move. An MTA spokesperson told Politico the subways have basically run 24 hours a day for the last 115 and a half years. The only exceptions were periods of extreme weather, strikes and blackouts. But the constant service doesn't always leave enough time for repairs and cleaning. Cuomo said the results of this during the pandemic have been deadly and mentioned the MTA workers and police officers who have died from the virus. The MTA criticized the city and state for waiting until a pandemic to seek solutions for a homeless problem which has long existed. Army leaders are defending their decision to bring nearly 1,000 senior West Point cadets back to campus for a graduation ceremony. They say protective measures are in place and there are other essential tasks that need to be done. Army leaders said on Thursday the decision to bring nearly 1,000 West Point cadets back to campus was necessary. Senior cadets are returning for a commencement ceremony. Lieutenant General Darrell Williams said certain tasks had to be done to prepare the cadets for joining the Army, including... It was a series of medical tasks, essential tasks, that can only be done at the United States Military Academy. The graduation ceremony is set for June 13th. President Trump announced earlier this month he would give a speech at West Point. Returning Military Academy cadets will be screened for the virus. We'll do it safely and for all the parents and cadets that are out there watching right now, we're going to take care of them. He said steps will be taken to ensure social distancing is maintained. That includes eating and living separately and with 60 to 70 percent of cadets leaving in their own vehicles. Army Secretary Ryan McCarthy said the plans in place for over a month had been passed along. 
to the Secretary of Defense and then on to the White House. But the president had accepted the invitation to speak at the academy back, I believe it was in February. The cadets left the academy in early March, leaving their gear behind. They've been learning remotely since their spring break due to the pandemic. The likely Democratic presidential nominee, Joe Biden, is denying allegations of sexual assault. A woman who worked for him in the Senate has accused him of assaulting her at the U.S. Capitol in the 90s. Biden responded to her claims over a month after she made them, saying it never happened. Let them be frustrated for a while. Former Vice President Joe Biden has denied an accusation that he sexually assaulted a former staffer of his. Biden says the allegations that he engaged in misconduct 27 years ago aren't true and that it never happened. Tara Reid worked for Biden as a staffer in the Senate. She filed a police report in early April accusing him of assaulting her at the U.S. Capitol in 1993. She first came out with the allegations last year in an interview with the California newspaper. Back then, she said it was sexual harassment, but her recent police report is for sexual assault. She said she held back the details out of fear. Reid has called for the release of Biden's congressional and personnel papers. Those could potentially shed light on the supposed assault and the actions his office allegedly took to force her out of her job. Million Americans have lost their jobs. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell questions the lopsided media coverage surrounding the allegations. He says the same media that were outraged about unproven allegations against Justice Kavanaugh have shown little interest in similar ones against Biden. The police in Washington, D.C. are no longer investigating Reid's sexual assault complaint against Biden. Amazon CEO has received a letter from lawmakers on Friday asking him to testify before Congress is to do with antitrust concerns. Amazon initially said it didn't use non-public seller-specific data to determine which of its own products to launch. But a recent report from the Wall Street Journal seems to contradict that. It says seller data was being used to get a competitive advantage. Lawmakers said if this new report is right, then statements Amazon made to them earlier appear to be misleading and possibly criminally false. And a makeshift hospital in Spain closed today. The European country is at the, f at the beginning of a four-phase reopening plan. A makeshift hospital in Madrid closed today as all patients were discharged. Spain is in the first of a four-phase plan to lift its lockdown. The country plans to be fully back to normal at the end of June. Italy is planning to gradually ease lockdown measures starting May 4th. But social distancing must stay in place for now. Beach operators are thinking about introducing an obligatory reservation system to reduce crowding. Britain's housing minister says the UK may have hit its daily target of 100,000 virus tests. Health Minister Matt Hancock originally announced the target after coming under heavy criticism for moving too slowly. In Vienna, protesters demonstrate against future lockdown measures. Some of them cite the Austrian government's plan to restrict travel until a vaccine is discovered. The country is also working on a mandatory tracking app for its citizens, another future measure at the heart of the protests. Meanwhile, Austria reopened DIY stores, shops and hairdressers today. Up next, falling for Communist Party propaganda, a Chinese student abroad flew home to avoid the virus outbreak. What happened next devastated him. That and more after the break. Just what exactly prompted Dave Rubin's transformation from woke to awake as he describes it? What was the personal cost he faced for standing up for free speech and his beliefs? And why does he think it was worth it? And how is this coronavirus outbreak making people rethink social justice? In this episode, we sit down with Dave Rubin, host of The Rubin Report and author of the new book, Don't Burn This Book, Thinking for yourself in an age of unreason. This is American Thought Leaders, and I'm Yanya Kelik. Viewers have described China Uncensored like the Daily Show, but about China. Well, at the beginning, I was super excited when I got 500 views, and now the show's grown to about half a million subscribers on YouTube. One episode reached 7.9 million people. I'm a little freaked out that that many people have seen my face. In five years, I see China Uncensored as the sole source of edutainment worldwide.
Welcome back. As more states in the U.S. reopen, parts of China are seeing increased security presence and reports that unemployment there is massively underreported. Entity's Tiffany Meyer brings us more. Over 100 policemen armed with submachine guns and over 20 armored vehicles have started patrolling a city 120 miles northwest of Beijing 24 hours a day. Authorities say they're fighting street crime. But the city hasn't had any serious crimes or terrorist attacks that would justify such a presence. Some netizens believe that the Chinese Communist Party is trying to stop people from rioting. Chinese citizens' dissatisfaction with authorities is growing. One netizen wrote, it's a shameless regime. The people under its rule live like pigs, and the rulers are still always afraid they'll rebel. It just shows they aren't able to govern the country and know they have no right to do it either. It's hard for people from Hubei and Heilongjiang to find a job in other places. Many outsiders believe the virus situation in these two provinces is still very serious. Our reporter called a factory in another province and discovered that most factories there are refusing all job applicants from the two provinces. She said other factories have the same rule. How high is the unemployment rate in China? Li Xuanlei, director of a financial research institute in China, published an article on April 26, saying China's actual unemployment rate is about 20 percent, with 70 million people recently becoming unemployed. He's also hinted that China's official unemployment rate for March may be wrong. It was 5.9 percent, only 0.7 percent higher than last year. He says it doesn't tally with other economic numbers which have dropped sharply. On April 30th, he was removed from his role as director of the institute but remained as chief economist. The institute denied the removal had anything to do with his article, saying Li wanted to concentrate on research and removed himself. On the same day, Li issued a statement saying he didn't write the article himself. It was just published on his account. He said he later chose to withdraw the article, adding rumors like he was summoned by police and was forced to delete the article are pure nonsense. A young Chinese student returned home after seeing a communist regime's propaganda. From there, his life took a drastic turn. In today's Juliet Song has the story. A Chinese student studying in Italy flew home to escape the CCB virus outbreak there. After landing in Shanghai, he tested positive. Worse still, hotel staff where he stayed in quarantine destroyed his belongings, including cash and his official ID. He's devastated. But I can't go back to Italy without my passport. Also, all the official documents I need for school are there as well. I can't return to school without them. The student suspects he was infected on his flight. The day he tested positive, he was directed to a hospital for treatment. He questioned the staff after discovering his quarantine hotel had disinfected his room and destroyed his things. You destroyed all of my belongings. Things like this don't happen in this day and age. And you didn't even call me to ask. The hotel refused to compensate him. The student later wrote a long post on social media to defend his rights. His story went viral after the media picked it up, attracting over 260 million views. Netizens discovered he's a nationalistic internet troll. Typically called Little Pinks, they defend the ruling Communist Party against all criticism. In a post about protests in Hong Kong last year, he wrote, I'm so upset reading news about those Hong Kong protesters every day. Go lick the feet of your American dad. Do you think you're American? Expressing demands? What demands? Can't you express it in a nice manner? Not only do you throw away the Chinese national flag, you insult and beat people. A bunch of dogs. Hashtag Hong Kong protests sit in the airport obstructing traffic. Right after he returned home, he published a post on social media. I just landed in Shanghai. I cried. I dared not to eat or drink anything on my way back, but since the airplane landed, my heart settled. A China Affairs commentator says the student is a victim of the Chinese Communist Party's propaganda. 
He believed Chinese Communist Party's propaganda, thinking the situation in China is better or that the medical treatment there is more advanced than abroad. So he went back. Although seemingly in a free environment, many Chinese students studying abroad still hang out with friends from their home country and read news from Chinese state-controlled media. They may very likely still fall for propaganda from the communist regime. Even though he went abroad, his mind stayed inside China, under the Communist Party's domination. That is to say, his physical self is outside the wall, but his inner spirit stayed inside. For little pinks like him who are studying abroad, it's a common phenomenon. Gu said the student isn't able to see the Communist Party's true nature, so he couldn't make a rational judgment about what he should do during the pandemic, which impacted his life and his future. Reporting by Juliet Song, NTD News, New York. Up next, NASA is getting help from SpaceX, Blue Origins and Dynetics to come up with the best landing system for when its astronauts go to the moon. Find out what each of the space firm's models look like after the break. How do we get to this point? Back in December, the coronavirus was already spreading in Wuhan, and the Chinese Communist Party was covering it up and punishing the whistleblowers who dared to report the truth. Their actions led to this pandemic, which now has us, in America, stuck in our homes and losing our jobs. To this very day, the Communist Party is still lying, making it more critical than ever for us to get honest reporting about China. The Epic Times is able to bring you the uncensored truth because we maintain a network of underground sources inside of China hidden from the censors of the communist government. For instance, our investigative team has been contacting individual funeral homes, hospitals, and they've obtained leaked internal documents which show that China's official numbers are massively underreported by a factor of at least 10. If you're looking for an honest source of news that can keep you informed and safe, check out The Epic Times. Go to readepic.com and try your first month for just a single dollar and get real journalism delivered straight to your doorstep. Welcome back. NASA is employing the engineering capabilities of SpaceX, Dynetics, and Blue Origin to once again bring man to the moon. The aerospace companies are expected to finish developing their landing systems by 2024. NASA on Thursday said it would split $967 million among three companies, SpaceX owned by Elon Musk, I love this. Blue Origin owned by Jeff Bezos and Dynetics in order to build lunar landing systems that can carry astronauts to the moon by 2024. That's an accelerated deadline from the White House. Details on the specific amount of money each company will receive was not immediately known. The next manned mission to the moon will require leaps in robotic technologies and a plan for NASA to work with the three companies to design and develop human landing systems. Last year, Bezos unveiled Blue Origin's design for the lunar lander, Blue Moon. This is Blue Moon. SpaceX, which is on the cusp of launching its first manned mission for NASA next month, will develop its Starship landing system to send crew and up to 100 metric tons of cargo to the moon. And Dynetics will manage a team of 25 partners to develop its human landing system. A NASA official told reporters on Thursday that picking three different providers allows the agency to have redundancy in case one company falls behind in development. German airliner Lufthansa tries to keep its autonomy while it gets bailout money from the German government. U.S. lawmakers are probing Carnival cruises over massive virus outbreaks on its ship and more on our business briefings. Lufthansa's chief executive warned against government interference in the airline's management as it seeks a bailout worth almost $10 billion. The group is trying to avoid bankruptcy due to the CCP virus pandemic, while also keeping its autonomy. Travel bans forced Lufthansa to ground 700 of its aircraft, causing a 99% drop in passenger numbers. Germany could end up taking a 25.1% stake in the airline as part of the bailout. 
Carnival Cruises was told to hand over documents related to CCP virus outbreaks on board. The U.S. House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure requested the materials. The committee wants to find out the details of the cruise line's response to over 1,500 CCP virus infections on its ships. At least 39 people have died after contracting the virus on its ships. The committee says Carnival has not put enough safeguards in place despite the problems. A letter accuses the company of ignoring the public health crisis. Oil prices rise as OPEC Plus begins record production cuts. U.S. oil prices rose by almost 17 percent. The cuts were agreed upon in April after an oil production war by Russia and Saudi Arabia put too much oil on the market and helped wreck prices, along with a global drop in demand from the CCP virus pandemic. Coming up, a scarf a day keeps the nation informed. Dr. Deborah Burks has become a pop culture phenomenon. Find out more when we return. Welcome back. The daily White House briefings are making waves in the fashion community and turning Dr. Burks into a pop culture commodity. Dr. Deborah Burks is getting noticed for her scarf collection. One Texas woman made an Instagram account with the name at Deborah Burks Scarfs, and it's really taking off. It's amazing to see so many people, not just it's, it's a combination of people that admire Dr. Burks and also like scarves. And, um, and so it's kind of created its own little community, um, which has been really fun and something I absolutely didn't expect. Now fans are posting their own photos inspired by Dr. Burks. A top fashion critic says the doctor stands out. She isn't wearing the typical Washington jewel tones or a suit. Her style was a lot, to me, is less about power and it's more about cajoling and reassuring. And I think she has been called upon to do both of those things in her position. The Ad Deborah Burke Scarfs account has over 30,000 followers now. Its creator says she's happy people can see beyond the fashion. The majority of people on that account recognize that it's more than just scarves. Um, and so the comments that come where, you know, she's a great role model for young women or those kinds of comments are always the ones that, that bring me so much life. She says she hopes the account gives people a break from dealing with nonstop virus coverage. And that's all for today's news. Thank you for tuning in. Join us again tomorrow. I'm Paul Greeny.